How do you walk with God when life is breaking you? Life can be challenging, hard, overwhelming, and tough. We lose a loved one, experience heartbreak, have a high demand at work, or barely make it from paycheck to paycheck. We can experience a period of our lives that feels so beyond our ability to endure. And then we think that it's just never gonna end. Life is gonna challenge us more and more as we get older, but we can allow God to mold, change, and influence us to grow. We're gonna look at three qualities we can build to help us live a lifestyle of growth with God. Number one. Be moldable. Jeremiah 18, verse three through six. So I went down to the potter's house and found him working at his wheel. Now and then there would be something wrong with the pot. He was molding from the clay with his hand. So he would rework the clay into another kind of pot as he saw fit. Then the Lord said to me, I the Lord say, O nation of Israel, can I not deal with you as this potter deals with the clay? In my hands, you, O nation of Israel, are just like the clay in this potter's hands. Just as this scripture highlights, God's relationship with us involves us being moldable, like pliable clay that a potter could use. Being moldable means you let God guide you into who you can become. In other words, when you are moldable, you are flexible and adaptable. If things aren't going your way, you don't get mad, you adjust. Being flexible and moldable helps us turn to God. God molds us to prepare us for something even greater than we are going through right now. Growing with God as a lifestyle means that no matter what is going on in our life, you allow yourself to be molded by God. God can use imperfections, smooth out rough, bumpy edges, and also make good plans better. When we are inflexible and don't want to let God hammer out of us, the pride, bitterness, and deceit that we cling to, we end up angry and nitpicky how God has been shaping our lives. Why don't you just say it? I'm the worst toy maker in the world. I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. <gasps> no, buddy, you're not a cotton-headed ninny muggins. We all just have different talents, that's all. Seems like everyone else has the same talents except for me. I can resist and fight the molding of God. I don't want to be pushed and pressed into spots that are hard for me going to places that cause me to confront my weaknesses, my limits, and to need God's help. My pride keeps me from being humble with God and friends. Are you flexible when things aren't going your way? How do you respond? In what ways is God bringing you out of your comfort zone to iron out some of those rough patches in your life? Number two, be changeable. In Matthew 3 verse 11, ask for me, I baptize you with water because of your repentance. That is, because you are willing to change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret your sins, and live a changed life. But he, the Messiah, who is coming after me, is mightier, more powerful, more notable than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to remove, even as his slave. He will baptize you who truly repent, with the Holy Spirit and you who remain unrepentant with fire judgment. The longer we are alive, the more old ways of thinking we can tend to have that need to actually change. We get stuck in rituals, habits, and duties that seem well and good, but often lack the heart and inspiration we had when we first believed. You may ask, how did this tradition get started? I'll tell you. I don't know. First, we should be willing to change our mind. This is recognizing that God knows better and trusting the Bible over our thoughts and opinions. And second, we must be willing to change our life. Changing our life means coming back to God because of how kind and merciful he is. God is patient and wants to bless us. When we understand this about God, we are motivated to change and continually turn to him. On that topic of changing how we think with God, I wanna tell you about a special project Deep Spirituality is working on. We are actually publishing our first book, He's Not Who You Think He Is, Dropping Your Assumptions and Discovering God for Yourself. It's written by our editor-in-chief, Russ Yule, and all the interactive media that was put together by the collective effort of our team here at Deep Spirituality. The book invites you to discover a refreshingly original way of thinking about Christianity in which God is actually at the center rather than people, religion, or emotions. Our goal is to offer hope to anyone who is curious, confused, or has grown cynical about organized religion and the God it presents. Because we know the Christianity of the Bible is inspiring, intimate, and innovative, it is life-changing and undeniably attractive. The book expands on the topic that we're talking about in this video, changing our perspective on God, changing our thinking, and so much more. You can find it on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible. Links in the description below. Now let's get back to it. 
Number three, be influenceable. <laughs> Matthew 18, verse three. And said, truly I say to you, unless you repent, change, turn about, and become like little children, trusting, lowly, loving, forgiving, you can never enter the kingdom of heaven at all. When we understand real change, we know we have to remain humble and desire to learn all the time. This can also be defined as being influenceable, which is when you allow others to have an effect on your character, development, or behavior. Like the scripture says, to be influenceable, we have to be trusting, lowly, loving, and forgiving like children are. Trusting is if you have children or have ever cared for children, they look to you to take care of them and trust that you will do what is best for them. Children aren't too proud to ask for help or just ask questions if they don't understand something. Even children who have unloving parents can love and forgive them despite how they were treated. We like to say kids are resilient. God likes to say kids are loving and forgiving. We need people that challenge us and encourage us to be better. Those who have sharpening relationships can more easily turn to God, especially if they surround themselves with those who love God and frequently turn to Him. We can keep each other sharp by challenging and encouraging each other to turn to God. Who do you allow to influence you? Do you get input from them about your life, your choices, and your future? Who do you influence? Do you influence them to turn to God or become more superficial, selfish, or hardened? We can all make the choice every day to turn to God, to let Him mold us and shape us. When we do, we'll experience real change. As life continues to show me areas I need to change, it helps me to remember that choosing to be moldable, changeable, and influenceable each day helps me to stay close to God instead of drifting far from Him. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our Deep Spirituality YouTube channel. If you want more devotionals or videos, please check out the YouTube channel and also deepspirituality.com. And if you're feeling that life's challenges are giving you a little bit of stress or anxiety, check out our video, Three Tips on How to Beat Anxiety by Trusting God. See you later.